Uh, what's on your mind this morning, though? What's on my mind? I'm talking about somebody who was a bitter enemy to Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And incidentally, what many Ghanaians did not know is the fact that the two of them were distant cousins from the Wenchi Royal House. One of them had his ancestors moving to Awarin Dadiaso in the Awarin area near the Ivorian border and from there to Takwa Nsaim and his great grandmother being married to the Enzema area mm -hmm. to become an Enzema. But to date, the two families are inextricably linked. And that is Dr. Kofi Abrifa Buzia, who was born on 11th July 1913 at Wenchi, started school at the Wenchi Methodist School. And indeed, he had wanted to become a Methodist pastor. From there to the famous Infantipum School, then to University of London, where he did the first degree, and then Oxford University, where he read social anthropology, masters, and PhD, and his monumental PhD works entitled The Position of the Chief in the Modern Ashanti System, is still considered as one of the best anthropological, anthropological work ever done at Oxford University. He returned to the country in 1942. He was appointed a district commissioner up to 1949. A year earlier, the University of Ghana had been set up. So from 1949, this famously regarded academic, went to the University College of the Cocos, now University of Ghana, <clears throat> and became the first African to have lectured in that university in the field of African studies. Mm. Then in 1954, he left the university and became the Wenchi MP in parliament. And under that constitu uh, constitution, which was a cabinet system of government, Nkrumah being the prime minister, he being the leader of the national liberation movement in parliament, he became the opposition leader to Kwame Nkrumah. In 1959, he felt that his life was heavily threatened, and so he left the country and went back to Oxford, where he began teaching at both Oxford and Leiden universities as professor of African studies and anthropology. And indeed, he became the first Ghanaian to have been appointed a professor at Oxford University. Let us remind ourselves that the first Ghanaian ever to have attended Oxford University and indeed the first African to have attended Oxford University was Philip Kweku from Cape Coast in the 1750s. Now, many people also make the mistake of thinking that Professor Buzia was Ghana's first professor. We have said it over and over again that it was rather Professor Anton William Amo, who died about 200 years before Professor Buzia was born. Now, in 1966, March 1966, Professor Buzia will return to Ghana because his enemy, Nkrumah, had been overthrown. And he was made the lead advisor to the National Liberation Council, which had overthrown Nkrumah's government. He chairing the National Advisory Committee of that junta. Now he was also appointed the chairman of the Civic Education mm -hmm. Committee and that made him travel the length and breadth of the country. Ostensibly uh, campaigning even before the campaign started to lead the whole nation. That is another debate altogether. He was part of the Constituents Assembly that drew up the 1969 Constitution. And after the 1969 election, his party, the Progress Party, won by a landslide majority in Parliament. 105 seats in the Parliament made up of 140 seats. And uh, K.A. Bedemes 
uh, National Alliance of Liberals uh, forming the minority in parliament. In 1972, 13th January, mm -hmm. his government was overthrown and came in a new junta National Redemption Council led by the then Colonel Hello. Ignatius Kutu Echampo. Many reasons are given for the overthrow of K.A. Buzia less than three years in power. The first and most immediate one was the fact that Nkrumah's government had been one that believed in a centralized form of government. The state taking the initiative in putting up factories and almost every form of investment. So we had state enterprises everywhere. Immediately, Nkrumah was overthrown under Buzia's advice. And Buzia was a 100% pro-Westerner who believed in the private sector as the engine of growth. So under his advice, then LC, and later his own government would diversify the state entities much to the annoyance of many Ghanaians. He's on record as having devalued the city by 44%. And that would mean that prices of goods would shoot up and then importation of goods would cost a lot. So when he came to power, people were complaining about hardship because people felt that belonging to an entity that opposed Nkrumah and having been given the opportunity to rule Ghana under your time should be far better than that of Nkrumah. But People were saying, relatively, his was worse. At the international level, Buzia incurred the displeasure of almost every state, especially those who believed in Pan-Africanism. In 1969, when Nigeria was just fresh from civil war, and they had about one million people living and working in Ghana. And you know, Nigerians love business. They had mansions. Go to almost every town, they will show you how Nigerians taught Ghanaians how to put up heavy, heavy mansions. Mm. This man gave them just two months to leave the country under the aliens' compliance order. And immediately, Burkina Faso, Benin, Togo, and Nigeria will be at loggerheads with us because they were affected most. Again, when the UN passed a resolution to isolate apartheid South Africa. Professor K. A. Buzia opposed that. And he rather said Ghana or the whole world should start a dialogue with South Africa. And so the OAU would be against Professor K. A. Buzia. He also did one thing that incurred the displeasure of a section of the Ghana army. You see, when Nkrumah was president, he did something which we learn in political science called CPPification of the Ghana army. He consciously <laughs> planted the CPPification of the Ghana. He consciously planted the CPP in the army, sending some of their officers to the Winnie Bakwam and Koma Ideological mm -hmm. Institute. Mm -hmm. And Buzia did not realize that still the man had a big support base within the army. Now, it was during his era that the Guinea government sent a delegation to Ghana pleading with the government to allow it to contact certain herbalists in order that they would get some help from Ghana because Nkrumah was ailing. In fact, after the Kulungugu episode, he developed some rashes which were developing into cancer. And Nkrumah said that there were some herbs in the Western region which were helping him a lot. And after the coup, he didn't have access to this. And so the Guinea government, realizing that the man might die without Ghana's assistance, sent a delegation to plead with the government so that they would get the help periodically to treat Nkrumah. And Buzia treated Nkrumah the same way as he had treated him earlier on. Mm -hmm. That in 1959, if he had remained in Ghana, he would have been jailed under the Preventive Detention Act. So he also responded that the man can die, I don't care. And no wonder his friends in the army would have to do anything possible to save him. Let me say something here, that in the early 50s when Echampong entered the 
army, I mean, was in the training to be enlisted in the army. On the day that they were to be commissioned, the colonial administration, for whatever reason, put aside a champion and decided not to enlist him. Kwame Nkrumah was at the parade grounds. He went straight to the young champion. He asked, what is your problem? Why are you sitting here when your friends are there, sir? The white man is saying that I'm not fit to be in the army. Nkrumah went to the colonial uh, leaders of the army and told them that until this young man had joined the parade, nobody would be called him to the army today. Nobody. So after George job between them, Nkrumah called a champion and he joined his colleagues. And this man said to himself that I would always do whatever that is necessary to acknowledge what Nkrumah has done for me. So when they heard that they are his bosom, his master, his father, his friend was seriously ill and needed to be brought home to be treated, he quickly sent this school. And that was when Buzia was away on a medical checkup and succeeded. After the coup, he sent Nkrumah's son, Professor Francis Nkrumah, to go and check on his health. And he reported that, no, Nkrumah cannot come back to Ghana. Because Francis Nkrumah himself is a medical doctor. He testified to, he attested to the fact that he would die within a few months. But at least, the champion did something in memory of Nkrumah. His junta, he named National Redemption Council. The redemption in the middle reflects Nkrumah's name, Osajofo, the Redeemer. Buzia will die in August 28, August 1978, from a heart attack. You go down to history as a very brilliant scholar who failed miserably in terms of politics. Thank you.